Good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, worship at St. John's. If you're uh, you know, with us here, you're connecting with us online. We're so thankful that uh, that you're here. And uh, have you ever had to change your mind about something? Oh, yeah, even even Presbyterians, we change our minds. This morning, we're going to be looking at a, a story uh, from the Book of Acts, but a time when someone had a well more than changed their mind. They had a change of heart, and it really kind of changed the world for uh, for all of us that are that are here today. So we're going to sort of look at, uh, at that story. I um, I was quite surprised uh, and to, to hear all of the, the laughter and, and warm conversation this morning. I thought everybody would be in mourning after the, uh, the Leafs were uh, eliminated last night, but that's okay. I mean, it's a it's just one of those signs of spring, you know, the leaves are out. So um, a few announcements today. Uh, there are uh, letters being handed out. They will be mailed out uh, to folks that aren't here. Um, uh, just outlining sort of our, our plans and sort of our timeline as we, we transition from our home here on uh, Mountain Street uh, to our... I don't, I don't know if I'd say it's our new church home because it's our former church home, but it's our next church home uh, at the uh, Trinity Building uh, at uh, 100 Main Street West here in Grimsby. Uh, and so uh, some important dates, of course, I uh, want to highlight that uh, May the 26th is our anniversary Sunday. Uh, typically, we'll have someone come in and pay us a visit and they'll, they'll give us a, a message and, and that'll be a you know, wonderful service. However, this, uh, this time, we really wanted to take the opportunity to, to look back at the events, uh, whether that be outreach projects or, uh, or mission projects or community celebrations that, that we've had that have shaped St. John's into the community that it is today. And so uh, Murray Bain is going to be compiling these stories. So. Um, Please, if you have something you'd like to share, a memory of a, of a time here at St. John's uh, that was particularly meaningful to you or uplifting to you or you, you felt a, a real sense of belonging here, uh, please share that with, uh, with Murray. Uh, and if you'd like to weave these stories together to help us uh, kind of tell the, the history of, of St. John's. And we have a beautiful um, history Jill Jones put together for us uh, Yes, the last update was about 10 years ago, but uh, we're kind of looking through that as well to, to find some stories. We'd love to hear from you as well um, about the, the experience that you've had at St. John's and, and connect with Murray about that. Uh, his contact info uh, is in the bulletin. Um, also, if you would like a memento of St. John's to, uh, to take from here with you, uh, certainly there are books available in the library. Uh, Take one or ten, however many you want. Um, no, there's no return on those. So if there's something you like from our library, please again, um, that's available to you. Uh, also, if you would like to have a, a book of praise or you would like to have a Bible, uh, we've got uh, a lot of them. And so if you want one or both of those things, um, they will be available on May the 26th. If you're not able to be here that day connect uh, with uh, Nancy Louise in the church office and uh, we'll set up a time uh, when you can uh, collect those. Um, and of course, we are uh, really delighted to have Maria return to us from her, her travels uh, and uh, hearing a little bit about, uh, about the story of, of her adventure. It sounded like a wonderful time. And I'm really disappointed she didn't need any help with her luggage, but uh, she has returned, uh, and so we're, so welcome her uh, her back home, and we look forward to chair chat, uh, which begins again this Friday. Note that the change in time it starts at 10:30, not 11 o'clock. So that's 10:30 uh, on Fridays, uh, and uh, coming up a week from Friday, May the 17th at 10:30 is the the celebration of life for Wynne Conley. Uh, been a, a few questions and just want to confirm the date and time uh, through in that because I know the paper said one thing but um, uh, plans changed that that was printed uh, a few months ago so May the 17th please join us as we uh, we remember uh, someone who was well was our oldest oldest member and um, just a, a blessing to so many 
Uh, I believe that's all of the announcements. If you want to look in your uh, bulletin, in your calendar is there. So let us pause for a moment of quiet reflection as we prepare our hearts for worship. We begin with a call to worship, which is responsive, so please join me. We come with joy to this celebration of God's love. Open our hearts, Lord, to receive your love. We come with hope to this witness of God's power. Challenge and encourage our spirits to serve you, Lord. We come with a willingness to proclaim God's presence to all. We thank God for this invitation to worship, witness, and serve. Amen. Please pray with me, loving and gracious God. We thank you for, uh, for your wide mercy, for your wide invitation, your warm welcome uh, to, to such a diverse group of people. Lord, we thank you for the ways in which uh, we can belong to your body, uh, to Christ's body across, uh, across the globe and, and even in our own little community here. Uh, thank you for, for welcoming us. Thank you for the ways in which you teach us, you encourage us, you equip us for, uh, for the good times and for the challenging times, for your unfailing presence with us, Lord. And it's that presence and that welcome that we celebrate this morning. Lord, there are times when we neglect to be as welcoming to others as you are to us. We, we choose to not to maybe open our arms or open our doors as widely. Sometimes, Lord, we're, we're a little hesitant to even step outside our door to, uh, to welcome in the stranger, the neighbor, the traveler, or the friend. God, create in us an even more welcoming spirit. Help us to reflect in a very profound way the welcome that Christ has shared with each one of us. Help us to reflect that into, um, into our own lives as we uh, share your, your warm, um, uh, welcoming uh, hospitality uh, to others as we share your love with them. Lord, we celebrate your presence with us today. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Friends, really good news today that no matter where any of us has wandered, whether it be near or far, that we are welcome home. No matter if we have been away for a long time or we've been here all along, we know that Christ's arms are open to us, welcome us in, embracing us, because we are a welcomed and forgiven people. Uh, by Christ's death and resurrection. Thanks be to God for his forgiveness to each of us and for his loving welcome to each one. Amen. Let us uh, join our hearts and voices together as uh, we stand to sing our opening prayers.
But please be seated and kids want to come forward for our special story time. Well, I would ask you what's in this bag, but you haven't put the bag together this morning. So that's sort of the element of surprise is good. Um, but I brought something in here, and I wonder if in these crayons, if you might find one of your favorite colors. Can you pull one of your favorite colors? Could you? Pink. One of your favorite colors. Is that your most, is that your favorite, favorite color? Yeah. Yellow, yes, we love it. Lello, as it's called in our house. Um, so we've got some, some crayons here, and, uh, and I know everybody here, I'm sure you have a, a favorite color that uh, that you you most enjoy. Uh, I think it's pink and, uh, and yellow in our house are the, are the favorites. Um, if I asked you to draw a picture, Really nice picture of say say something like a, a, a forest or say um, maybe a, a nice picture of a church. Did you draw a really nice picture of a, of a church building a couple of weeks ago? It's a very nice picture. Do you think you'd just use your paint crayon to do the whole thing? No, why not? Why would you? Why would you? Why would you just use one color? It would, yeah, it would look like the church, or it would look like would look like the forest. There's all kinds of wonderful colors in in our world, in nature, or uh, in our in buildings, or in the clothes that that we wear, or or even to, to, to the way in which people look. Um, different, different colors. And it's, a, it's a really beautiful thing. And so it's important if you're going to make a, a nice picture that represents them. You want to use lots of uh, lots of different. Colors. And so we're going to learn, and I'm going to teach you a, a word today. It's our million dollar word. And I think it's a word that our grown ups would love. So I'm going to ask one of them to explain what it means. But our million dollar word today is the word ecumenical. Ecumenical. Is there a grown up that knows what that word means? Say, say it out loud if you know what it means. Joining together, but not different groups. Yeah, lots of lots of different faiths or different churches working together. That's a that's a very fancy word. Well, that's we're we're Presbyterian here. We know all Presbyterians that are that are here today. But there are people in churches all across Grimsby this morning um, worshiping and doing different things to to worship God in their own. Special way of doing it with their own, uh, their own community. But it's really wonderful when our churches can do things together. And many different colors make up uh, make up the church. And so uh, it's not all blue, Presbyterian blue, or it's not all pink, or it's not all yellow. It's a it's a real uh, diverse uh, set of colors uh, that we that we see uh, and. In our, in our Bible today, in the book of Acts, there's a, there's a book in the Bible that tells the stories of the, the church, the very, very first part of the church, just after Jesus went back up to heaven, people learning how to be the church. And there was a man named Peter. He thought that only one kind of people could be a part of Jesus' church. Even though Jesus welcomed so many people uh, to, to different things. That, Jesus was doing. And um, and Peter had the Holy Spirit tell him that there's a lot of different people all across the world from different different backgrounds that can belong to Jesus. And this other group of people that Jesus or Peter was asked to be called, they were called the Gentiles. And typically they weren't really allowed as part of Jesus' family uh, before, but 
Peter decided to got to know them and knew that they they loved Jesus and they wanted to get to know him more, and so he, he baptized them. And that really uh, opened it up to the people of you and I can be part of Jesus family because we're not Jewish, we're Gentiles. And so um, so you know that Peter had a change of heart and um, and uh, as God uh, helped him to, to see things in a different way. And now we have a really diverse church that's really important for us to think of ways that our churches can work together. Like when we get together for, with, with the families downstairs, there's people from all different kinds of churches that come. There's Presbyterian, there's a bunch of St. Louis uh, Catholic churches that come, there's Anglican friends that come, and there's some friends that don't really belong to any church at all. And so it's a really beautiful thing when we can learn to work together uh, to love God because we're all welcome here. So let's, um, let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for uh, creating such a welcoming church with many different uh, colors and, and stripes of faith. God, help us to learn from each other, to work together, and to welcome each other the same way Jesus welcomes us. We pray these things Jesus, then we spit and we pray the prayer of Jesus to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our debts as we forgive our debts. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. As you go downstairs, then take the video and try to make the most powerful picture that you can. Alright? Alright, I want to welcome the, our friend Ed to come forward and to read our scripture for us uh, from Acts chapter 10. Top of the morning, do we? This morning's scripture reading is taken from Acts chapter 10, verses 44 to 48, and also on the screen. Gentiles received the Holy Spirit. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. This is the word of the Lord. Have you ever opened your mouth before with good intention to say something and things go in a wild direction? There's a lot of backlash maybe from what, what you've said or uh, you want to speak your mind or speak what you believe is, is right or believe to be true. And maybe someone looks at you like you've got three heads. Or someone gets after you for saying, well, you, you really shouldn't talk that way, or, well, that's an old way of thinking. I think we've all been in that situation before. That's precisely where the Apostle Peter finds uh, himself in this morning. These are uh, sort of a, a short few verses, a really short passage, but a very key passage in the book of Acts. This scene is kind of like the, the, the transition scene. And it's kind of seamless. Luke, who was the, the fellow who put the, the Acts, the Apostles, that book together, in sort of the second volume, as it were, to the Gospel of Luke, includes this, this scene because Peter has the, a change of, of heart about Gentiles. At that time, 
a couple chapters earlier, Peter is, uh, is pretty sure in his mind that only uh, people who are of the, of the Jewish faith or, uh, can really jump into, make that leap into being followers of Jesus. He's firmly in that camp. Even though he saw Jesus walking and talking and dining, rubbing shoulders with, with both Jews and Gentiles. Even though he heard uh, Jesus give him the Great Commission to go and make disciples of all the nations, not just the nations that sort of look like his own or talk like his own or, or think in the exact same way as his own tribe does. There's a couple of chapters earlier, Peter has a, a vision of this, this sheet coming down from heaven with all kinds of animals on it. And here's a voice saying, kill and eat. And Peter looks at these animals and, and some of them uh, by the Jewish custom and law would be okay for him to eat, but some of them uh, would, would not follow that custom and law. And so he's saying, well, I can't, I can't do this. All these laws that I know uh, would, would condemn me for doing this. And, uh, and Peter, he must have been a good Presbyterian because boy, he got to be stubborn at times. Uh, needed three times to, to kind of get the message that uh, anything that, that God has created, any animal that God has created, it's okay. It's okay. It's not uh, unclean. And so he has this and then this, this vision and then these visitors come uh, that, to, that have uh, sort of been sent by him by uh, another man who was not of the Jewish faith, but wanted to know more about Jesus. And so uh, so Peter went to, to visit this man named Cornelius in his, his household and did some, some teaching. But the first thing that, uh, that Peter says when he's welcomed into to Cornelius' house is he points out that Jews and Gentiles should really not be uh, intermingling. This is, this is not okay. What a way to, to say thanks for the invitation to uh, to, to uh, I, someone who's welcome you into your home. You, you walk in the door and someone says, you know, invites you over and you say, you know, I really shouldn't be here for all of these reasons. Well, that's, that's sort of a, not a great way to, uh, to uh, reciprocate hospitality. But Peter, uh, Peter says this and, and, and continues and, and does the teaching and in his time there, the, the Holy Spirit comes on this, this house and these people that are gathered are able to, to do the same things that happened in Acts chapter 2 when the Holy Spirit was, was, uh, was poured out on the day of Pentecost. And so it's after this experience that Peter has this realization that, that Edward for us this morning, why should the waters of baptism be withheld from these Gentiles. Is not the Holy Spirit coming upon them in that same way that the Holy Spirit came upon our community? But in so doing, if you read on into chapter uh, 11, Peter kind of gets himself into some hot water. Not really cold water of baptism, but hot water. Um, in that uh, he, he has to really explain himself to to this other, other council of uh, leaders in, in Jerusalem about why uh, these, these Gentiles, these uncircumcised people, are now welcome into God's kingdom, into Christ's family. Last week we talked about the story of the Ethiopian eunuch and in the same way, even though he came from a, a different culture and a different background, was curious about Jesus, was curious about the, the prophet uh, Isaiah and what he was, uh, what he was speaking of. And, and Philip was able to explain who Jesus was and, and, Philip, uh, and this Ethiopian eunuch wanted to be part of, of this movement of Christ. And so as we discover in these particular chapters of Acts, that God moves in surprising and unexpected ways. Well, are they really all that surprising considering the way that Jesus lived, considering the instructions that Jesus gave his apostles? Yet, as, uh, as humans are, 
Uh, we uh, have to try and, with God, expect the unexpected. And I wonder sometimes, and I hear it in our, in our congregation at times, and I've heard it in other congregations that I've been a part of, and I'm sure you have too. So this isn't just a St. John's challenge. But I think it's uh, certainly a, a challenge in most congregations is that we don't really expect God to do a whole lot for us. We come and gather as a, as a community for, for worship or uh, to have fellowship with one another or, or maybe there's other key gatherings through the week that we do. Or maybe we, we visit, to, visit together in, in each other's homes or on the phone or however it is. Not really expecting God to show up. We think that things are just a, a foregone conclusion because uh, of, of our hard work or, or because, well, that's the, the way that the trend is going and uh, there's nothing you can do about it and it's a, it's a done deal. But with God, as we are reminded in Peter's uh, transformation of heart, he didn't just change his mind, but he changes his heart to things that he believes about who is welcome and not welcome. That uh, uh, in the same way, since God is eternal, we can expect the unexpected with God. And those unexpected uh, occurrences, those unexpected interactions, those, those unexpected moves of the Holy Spirit prompt us, urge us to live differently. Open the eyes of a heart that we notice God is at work. I'll tell you what I, what I mean, and, and I see it at St. John's, but I've seen it here about 18 months ago, the end of 2022. We're sitting around our, our, our session table, the ruling elders, and uh, kind of got to the, the point where we were sort of looking at at, uh, who's going to return as an elder, who wants to renew their term or, or not, or who's able and unable, or, or things like that. And, and at one point, we were down to just four elders. And that's not a good sign. You can, you can have four elders. Our, our quality says you can have four elders as a part of your, your session, but you can't have any less. It's at all. What are we going to do? Is this is this the end? Are we are we the church that was doing well and then COVID ground us to a halt and changes in the in the culture have really helped us to or made us struggle and that we're not as, as relevant or able to connect or we're not able to have a, a sense of mission? We don't have the leaders that we need. All these things go through one's mind. I didn't even reach out to the press and says, what, what do I do? What are my options? We had some options. And one of the options was, well, let's, let, let's see who else can be an elder here. And lo and behold, we found three very uh, capable, competent, gifted, compassionate people that want to serve as elders. And we uh, elected them in January of last year. And another one came along and said, you know, I'm up, I'm up for this thing again. I'll, I'll take on a, another term. I will do this. Then our team of four ruling elders went to a team of eight. Well, you can do a lot more with eight than you can with four, can't you? God was, uh, was at work in that time, challenging us to, uh, to go deeper, challenging uh, three of our people to take that next step of faith, to be leaders in our church, to be uh, to, to, to make some decisions, to come alongside folks in a compassionate way. And that was a, a very powerful thing to me that said, you know, God's not done here at St. John's yet. There's more to this story. You know, I remember last year we had three uh, congregational conversations. And when we started, I, 
again, it could have gone any number of directions. But in the back of my mind, I kind of believe, well, we've got some new, new elders, so why would we get new elders for this to yield the people saying, yeah, you know, I think, I think we'll, we'll throw in the towel and, and call it a day at St. John's. Didn't happen. We, we discerned as a, as a congregation that, uh, hey, we, we still want to be alive. We still want to, uh, to be a, a light for Christ in our community. But it's going to be a challenge for us to think about uh, a different way that we can reflect that. Because the way that we've done it, it has been effective for a number of years or decades, but maybe the last few with the, the changes that in the things that have been beyond our control, it's difficult. We need to, need to find a, a new way to shine. We don't need to change the light bulb by, by any means, but uh, maybe shine it in a new direction. And that's kind of what we tried to, to work on and continue to work on. And part of our, our discernment too is, well, you know, this, this wonderful home that we have been in for just over 95 years, it's been a blessing for, for 95 years, but it's a bit beyond beyond our means. We need, if we're going to shine our light in a different way, we need to find a, a new place where we can be and, uh, and, and make the most out of uh, the, the asset that we are living in. And again, through that discernment and conversation and prayer, we've kind of come to that conclusion, made those decisions. And they're difficult decisions to make. It's hard to let go of something that's been a part of who you are for so long, a, a physical thing like a building. But the things that will go with us are the memories they made, the lessons that we learned, the friendships that we made, the grace that we shared with our community, the welcome and hospitality that we bless folks with. And those things will continue with us. It doesn't matter wherever we are. That's who St. John's is. The other thing that was clear in our conversations is that we, we really can't just do this thing on our own anymore. In the 21st century, we need to find some partners that we can share the load with, that we can discern a mission with together, that we can create some sense of community with. And we've been doing some experimenting about what that looks like with our, uh, with our youth ministry, sharing that with, with Trinity United Church, with, uh, with the support of our, our family outreach ministry that, that we've done once a month, and the, and the ways in which you have supported that by showing up or, or by, by just giving gifts and support that's really opened up some doors and we've been able to kind of create a, a different kind or a different expression of church with a lower barrier for entry for, for young families that maybe don't feel welcome in a traditional Sunday morning environment because the kids are loud or the kids are busy, the kids are active. But they want something that's meets their needs in a different way. And we're working to create that. And St. John's has been a big part of that. But we have received some incredible support from a few members at, uh, at St. Andrew's Anglican. From, uh, from some folks that we've, we've met at, uh, at St. Joseph's Church. For, for some folks that are uh, from a Baptist background. For some folks that maybe don't really have a church affiliation, but they're, they're sort of curious about what it might be like to belong to a Christian community. This is sort of this, this melting pot that's, that's there. That's God's spirit at work. But what about for the grown-ups? We, we all miss our ecumenical Latin lunches. That's, that's a, a refrain I've heard for the last number of years through COVID, and, and I miss it too. And I know people in other congregations um, miss that as well. And, uh, and last month, um, myself and one of our elders got together with, with representatives from uh, a couple other congregations to, to talk about 
and discern and think about what are, what are some things that our congregations are already doing that we could do together to bless our community? What are some of the things that we are maybe excited about that we like to do, but we don't have the critical mass to get something going? And some great brainstorming is, has happened and uh, will continue to happen, and we're going to sort of circle back to this in September once life kind of begins again with the calendar ramping up to figure out what, what can we do together? Because there's an openness to working together. There's an openness to reflecting Christ's light together. But it takes that, that amount of openness, that those kinds of discussions, where maybe we're not going to agree on everything, but we find that common ground that we agree on. And it's been said that often the common ground is the higher ground. And by God's grace, we can build on that. I think it's a powerful witness when people can set aside their denominational barriers, and I think if we're being honest with ourselves, people in our culture don't know the difference these days between a Presbyterian and an Anglican and a United and a Lutheran or a Baptist or a Christian reformer or any of that stuff. It's all just churches to people. But when we find ways to work together, to find that higher ground, then, like Peter, our hearts and minds and experiences of God's kingdom are transformed. That cooperation, that collaboration, that mutual support, that desire for being in fellowship with, with other Christians, maybe, they, maybe some of their traditions are a little bit different than ours. But at the heart of it, we find how we identify Christ. Who is Christ as the one that, that died on the cross? Who is the resurrected Christ that gives us hope and healing and forgiveness? So friends, I would urge us in the coming months in your prayer life and in your conversation life to pray and ask the Holy Spirit for that sense of direction and purpose about what are some of the things that we can do together. Certainly, it goes beyond just sharing a, a space. The last couple of years, we've been able to open our doors and uh, have the Living Light Congregation be, be in, our, in our church home. In a couple months, we'll, we're gonna share a church home with, uh, with the folks at Trinity United, but it goes beyond just having four walls and a roof to ourselves or that it's shared. But what are the ways we can make the most out of those ecumenical relationships to bless our community, to make a difference for Christ, to set aside our differences in a way that is mutually glorifying to God, and that in a very harmonious way, we can make a difference for the glory of God. Friends, let us not just go in and assume that everything is a foregone conclusion, that there is, that there is no hope and it's going to be more of the same once we move. But there is uh, this unexpected surprise that can happen when we lean in to the promises that God has for us. If we go in and expecting nothing, then we're really not walking by faith at all. But when we go in and expect the unexpected, we invite the Holy Spirit to bless us with the unexpected and we're open to the opportunities God provides for us. Then we live by faith and walk by faith. And more importantly, share our faith in the risen Christ, with our community, and with one another. Friends, with God, let's expect the unexpected and be open to the blessings he has in store for us. Amen. Let's join our hearts and voices together as we sing a hymn of response in the ball of the risen flower. Butterfly. 
talk with God in prayer. Please pray with me. Loving and eternal Heavenly Father, we thank you for the way in which you have things planned out. Lord, we thank you for the way in which you, you see and notice things that are not on our radar. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that guides us and it gives us a, a gentle nudge or sometimes a, a firm shove if we're not listening into those expressions of faith where we, we trust to know there is more beyond the horizon. There's more than we can see and understand going on. But as we move forward in faith, we look back and see your fingerprints on our journey. We see your footprints on the pathway, not just ours. God, as we look into our future and wonder what it may hold, we know that you know. As we look into our hearts, help us to open the eyes of our hearts that we might see the possibilities that you have in mind. Possibilities and opportunities to bless our community in Christ's name. Opportunities and, and abilities to work with our Christian brothers and sisters that we may be able to, on the one hand, feel, feel comfortable and in our own belief systems of what it means to, to be the church or to belong to Christ. But on the other hand, that we might find that common and higher ground where we can come together in Christ and share his love in wonderful ways, in pastoral ways, in encouraging ways, in empowering ways, in ways in which reflect the hope that each one of us has in Christ. Lord, we remember those in our, our church family that are, are struggling. Lord, we pray today uh, for Tom and, uh, and his, his challenges and, uh, and pray, Lord, for his continued strength and healing. We remember uh, uh, Bob Forsyth and his, his own challenges, Bill, Scott, and, and many others who are in our hearts and minds that we know are in the midst of health struggles. May they be blessed with strength and courage to face each day as it comes, and may they know healing in profound ways. Lord, we also remember those 
who are living with, with, with emotional pain or who are trying to, to cope with some difficult news that they've heard about maybe their own lives or, or loved ones that are close to them. May they continue to find peace and strength and hope in you. May they be blessed with the wisdom of your spirit as they are, are, are present in these difficult times. And Lord, as your church family, may we, we know the ways that we can come around them and support them and lift them up during their difficult journey. Lord, we also pray for, uh, for a community of Grimsby. And uh, uh, we pray for a sense and knowledge of opportunities that we can bear meaningful witness to neighbors in our community. That we can find very prominent ways and profound ways to tell your story through our words, through our faith choices, that we can lead people to hope. Lord, we ask your continued blessing on some of these ecumenical experiments that, that we are trying and the conversations that are starting to happen and wondering about what could be shared. How can we be collaborative and cooperative and blessing your, your kingdom and sharing uh, and bearing witness with our neighbors? Guide us and equip us for the steps that lay ahead. Help us to find courage and confidence in your Holy Spirit, just as Peter did all those years ago. Open our hearts to the possibilities. Open our hearts to the welcoming of those different than ourselves. Open our hearts to expect the unexpected from you. We pray for your blessings and guidance on each one of us and on our collective journey as well. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Friends, as we close our, our time in worship, we are reminded that whatever uh, stripe of, of faith we, we belong to or the ways in which uh, we kind of paint a picture with our faith ecumenically, that Christ is the foundation of who we are and why we do what we do. So let us join our hearts and voices together as we sing the church's one foundation. Please.
Friends, as we go from this time of worship, remember that you have been created in the image of God. You've been created in love and to love. But you are God's masterpiece. And as we go from this place, we need the Holy Spirit to inform us and guide us and equip us to work together to paint a, a masterpiece of Christian friendship and harmony and unity bound together and guided by the Holy Spirit. Go therefore and be filled with the love of God, our Creator. Be filled with the peace of and the hope of Christ, our risen Savior. And go with the openness to the leading the guidance of the Holy Spirit, both now and forever. He is with us on our journey. Go with hope to love and serve the Lord.